Today we're going to learn how to solve exponential equations. Um, and we have seen them at least a little bit in problems like this. I've made you do problems like this where basically what you do is you guess and check and you would eventually come up with the answer x equals 5 just by trying different exponents here. When you get to a problem like this though, um, 2 to the x equals 13, this is a problem that we would not be able to get an exact answer for. We'd have to get some sort of a decimal and it just doesn't work out for us perfectly. So we're working towards a way to solve exponentials that doesn't mean just guessing and checking. And an example problem would be like what you see right here. If you use a little bit of common sense on this first example, I have a 7 for my base over here and I have a 7 for my base over here. If these two sides are equal to each other, it means this exponent has to be the same as this exponent. Otherwise, the sides wouldn't be equal. So all you're going to do to solve this problem, it's actually pretty quick and easy. You just equal your exponents to each other, and then you're just doing regular math. You should get 5 for your answer. So if the bases, bases being the number under the exponent here and here, are the same, they're both 7s, you just set the exponents equal, you solve for x that way, and it's not too big of a deal. But obviously, in most problems, you're not going to have it where it's already the exact same base. So it could be a setup like you see right here for our second problem. And on this problem, what we are actually going to do is use substitution. Turns out that 2 to the third power equals 8. 2 to the third power is 8. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute 2 to the third power where that 8 used to go. Everything else in my problem is going to stay the same. So I'll use a different color for that. Everything else here didn't change. I still have 2 to the 5x minus 4. I still have that x plus 2 for my exponent out here. But the only thing I did is I substituted in 2 to the third in place of the 8s. Um, if I do that, I'm going to distribute out my exponent right here. And it's going to say 2 to the 3x plus 6. And then this side over here is still 2 to the 5x minus 4. Now I do have the same base, just like on my first problem up here. And what I'm going to end up doing is setting my exponents equal to each other. So I'm going to have 5x minus 4 equals 3x plus 6. And if you solve this one, I guess you also get x equals 5. So by substituting something in here, we got the same base. Then you just set your exponents equal. So if your bases are not going to be the same, you have to use substitution to try to make them into the same base. And we're going to wrap this up with two more example problems right here. Um, on this next one, it takes a little bit of practice to get used to like what to substitute where. But this guy right here, 1 over 81, is the same thing as 3 to the negative fourth power. 3 to the fourth is 81, so 3 to the negative fourth makes 1 over 81. Everything else in my problem is going to stay the same for right now. Biggest mistake I see kids make on these problems is they try changing the wrong side of the problem. You want to make your bases into nice little whole numbers like they were both twos right here. Um, on this one, I want to make them both into threes. This guy is what equals three to the negative fourth power. So anyway, if you do that, you're going to get three and it's going to go negative eight X minus 20 if you distribute that out. This side just says 3 to the 7x minus 4. And now I'm doing my same normal math. I'm going to set my exponents equal. And then I'm just doing algebra to get an answer. Looks like I'm getting a fraction on this one. x equals negative 16 over 15. So I had to manipulate it so the bases were the same. Then you just equal that exponent to this exponent. All right, one more. So on this last problem right here, sometimes it might be that you have to change both sides of the problem instead of just one. Usually when you do these problems, you want your bases to be basically whole numbers that are less than 10. That's usually how these work out. So you get nice, clean, easy bases. Turns out this side is six to the second power. 
36 is the same thing as 6 to the second. And 216 is actually 6 to the third power. Now, you might be saying, like, how do you know that? And I will show you a little list to finish this video off. But you just substitute, and these both can be turned into sixes. So if I do that, I'm going to have 6 to the 8x minus 12. And I'm going to have 6 to the 15x plus 24, if you distribute that. Then we're just equaling our exponents. And if you actually solve this equation, add the 12, negative 7x, looks like you're going to get negative 36 over 7 for your solution. So you just make the bases the same, equal your exponents. Now, I've been doing these for long enough that I can look at this problem and I just knew right away, oh yeah, they're gonna be sixes, oh yeah, they're gonna be threes. But some of you guys are gonna struggle with that a little more. So what I have right here, if you wanna pause this video and just copy this down, it's a list of common powers of different numbers that we're gonna work with. So this is two to the first power, two to the second, two to the third, two to the fourth, etc. cetera. Five to the first, five to the second. And you saw in our last problem, we had a 36 and a 216. Those are both powers of six. So I'm gonna show you this list and copy this down just so you can get familiar with these numbers. You'll know what to use as a base a little bit easier. Um, the only thing that doesn't fit on the screen is 10, but 10 is easy. So we have the numbers two through 10, and then all of the powers that go with them. So when you see certain numbers, you'll recognize which base over here you're supposed to use.